Hello and welcome to On The Curbs. I'm your host, Team Albus Daly. Joining me this week is the latest addition to the Team Brit driver lineup, Yvonne Hufilar. We caught up recently to chat about how she came to join the trailblazing all-disabled racing team, what her experience in motorsport has been like so far, her ambitions for 2023, and much, much more. I hope you enjoy our conversation. Hi, everyone. Thanks for being here today. First of all, how are you? Hello. Thank you. And nice to meet you. I'm uh, doing good. Very busy at the moment. And uh, how are you? Uh, not too bad. Thank you. Good to hear you're all good. And uh, Christmas shopping or motorsport related or a bit of both for you? Yes. Well, my family is in the Netherlands and my girlfriend is in England. So uh, we are going to go with my parents to England. So that's good. I'll say fun time uh, of year we for have it. them. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, it's great to do that with Christmas. And last year it couldn't because of the COVID rules. So I didn't saw my family. So I'm very happy that we're now all together. Oh, definitely. And first question I've got for you then that I ask all of the Team Brit drivers. Can you tell us a bit about your disability and how it kind of impacts your day to day life? Well, I had scoliosis. Uh, they found it out when I uh, was five years old, but it was already progressed a lot. So uh, they said I have it since uh, I was born. And I wear a brace for, well, almost 10 years, till my back surgery. And then they fixed the spine. Uh, mm-hmm. I think only the under three, uh, three, how do you call it? Vertebrae? Yes are not fixated, the rest is all fixated. And uh, well, after that, uh, uh, I can't walk very well, uh, only a little bit. Uh, my balance is almost gone. I don't feel, have the good feeling in my legs and feet anymore. So it's all a bit adjusted. And uh, yeah, it affects some of the daily life, but I still can do anything, everything. And um, yeah, it's just, it takes a bit longer. And then yeah. sometimes with a wheelchair or a crutcher, and I can, yeah, I can do everything. I'd say, and, and once you're in the car, I imagine it doesn't make too much difference to, to how fast you can go there. But we'll, we'll get to that in a second, because I then want to ask you, what first got you interested in motorsport? Well, I'm already a huge fan of motorsports since I was little. I started go-karting when I was seven years old. And uh, I tried it on holiday in the north of France for the first time. <laughs> And I already liked cars and I watched the F1. And, mm. uh, and then uh, I said to my parents, well, I want to do this more. I like this and uh, I want to go further with it. And then we found in the Netherlands, in Zoetermeer, a go-karting club for children where we can learn. They organize races. And I thought, okay, I want to do this. So I came there, seven years old, little blonde girl. And they already needed to laugh a bit. You, you know how that goes. I said, well, I don't care. I will show you how I can So I do like talking on track. <laughs> yes, we'll see it on track. So, well, I started there, learned a lot, competed a lot, uh, and also won some things. And, uh, yeah, it's good. And then uh, well, I went outdoor for the Road Talks, uh, KF1. Yeah. Uh, by the time, it's not existing anymore. It's now a new class, but uh, by the time it was that. And uh, when I was 15, I got my racing license, did some testing all around. Uh, I had a seat for the Suzuki Swift Cup in the Netherlands. It's, uh, well, it's not, it's a really, uh, well, it's not a rookie class, but it's a popular class. Uh, Racing, uh, well, a little bit lower budget racing compared to, uh, the formula cars or something mm. but you can learn very well in it unfortunately my disability got worse and um, yeah I always say I will compete uh, till I am not competitive anymore with the other drivers because uh, I love the sport I have a huge passion for it but I also want to win no it's and, proper racing driver mentality there yes and uh, well I'm I was uh, driving, I was training a lot, and uh, well, the results didn't come anymore because I was just too exhausted. I couldn't move. And then I came to the point, okay, well, maybe I need to stop now. 
and I can see later if there is a possibility to 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 join something or maybe there is some adjusted racing in the Netherlands. It was not popular to drive with hand controls, not even in a normal car. So the racing car. Yeah, you're, back you're then, ahead of your time. It was, yes. Uh, what I needed back then, it just wasn't there. The option wasn't there or it was very expensive and you mm. pay more to get it in than for a racing seat the whole year or maybe two years. So, yeah, that's very difficult back then. So I just decided to stop and enjoy the sport from the other side. And, mm. yeah, I always hope to come back. And sure enough. But uh, we'll get to that in a second. So yeah. I just find it interesting because a lot of the other Team Brit drivers, they didn't always have the racing there. They kind of came to it a bit later, whereas you, pretty much day one, has always been there. So it's nice that... It gave them the opportunity to do something they never thought they'd do, but it's now given you the chance to do something you've always wanted to do and you can go back to it now. So yeah. with that in mind, how did you come to join Team Brit? Well, I drove for Eating Brit. Uh, the team mm. unfortunately stopped now. But uh, then I got a message from Dave on uh, Dave Player on LinkedIn. And I needed to read it three times uh, to be sure I understand that it's right. And I showed Sophie, I said, can you check this? I think I understand it right, but uh, check it to be sure. And then, uh, well, I said yes, because I took it with both hands. It was my dream to come back and uh, be on track uh, again. And eight weeks I was driving at Silverstone, the Grand Prix track, for the first time on the right side of the car, because we all drive here left, uh, on the yes, left side. Yeah. You, you said right time, side uh, of the car is the correct side of the car, yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't mind. I drive both <laughs> now, but, <laughs> but uh, for the first time I was on track after, I think, nine or ten years. Uh, yeah, that was amazing. I was going to say, how, how, was, how long was the gap there, but nine, ten years is... Did it feel kind of like riding a bike again in that sense that it was all familiar to you or did it take you a, a little bit of getting used to again? Well, I needed to get used to it. The hand controls were very different, which is an mm. amazing system. Uh, that's for sure. But I really needed to get used to it, get the feeling in it and uh, yeah, just get up to speed basically. And uh, I also didn't want to cause any accidents. I just wanted to no. learn and get the experience back, get the feeling back. Well, the feeling came back very quickly. Uh, basically, as soon as I put the helmet on, you just get in a zone. And yeah, that's all good. But um, yeah, I just needed to get used to the hand controls a bit more, uh, find my way with sharper turns because it was a bit difficult with the hands. And yeah, that was just what I needed to learn. It was just learn. a bit of a learning process rather yes. than anything being tricky. It was just you need to get back to adapt and to uh, figure out how it all works again. Yes, yes. Was so it a bit surreal a... being at Silverstone then? Because of all the places to, to kind of get back into it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very good place to start. It was also a bit emotional because it was a huge dream. Mm. And it came through so quickly, suddenly, uh, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, it was great to uh, to experience that and to be back and to get this, this opportunity. So then since you've been back with the team, you're saying you're on the e, e team first and then you've made the jump to, to the real world stuff. What's your experience been like with, with the team so far in terms of the other drivers, with Dave? How is that, have you fit into, into that groove? It's great. It's like a huge family that you come into and had a very warm welcome. Uh, I can learn from everyone, uh, made friends, made some good contacts. And uh, yeah, it's great. Obviously, easy, easy as pie. Then I, was, I wasn't expecting to be quite that straightforward, but I love that it is. <laughs> yeah. So you've kind of you joined this year, and then obviously we're we're nearly twenty twenty three now. What are your kind of personal slash professional ambitions on on track for next year? Well, we're gonna drive this year in the Citroen C one endurance races, and um, I'm gonna drive it with Sophie, with my partners, which is yeah, already great. That's cool. And with Angie and Asha, so we have an all ladies team. Oh, very for, nice. <laughs> uh, for next year, so that's great. And, um, well, I just want to gain experience, get the license up, uh, build the experience up, because my goal is high. I have loads of ambitions, and I know it's realistic, but I just need some more time in the car. 
-hmm. And I think this endurance racing is a great opportunity to, to get more track time, get more experience and uh, to reach the goals in the next few years. No, definitely. And the, the C1s have proven to be kind of a bit more popular than they used to be now in the last year or so as well. So it's great that you can jump onto, onto that whilst, whilst they're, everyone's kind of looking more at them as well because it gets, gives yes, you more attention. And then as you continue to improve, you never know what, what that might lead to as well then. Yes, it's great. And uh, my goal is to learn. So I, I think this will be a great way to learn more and uh, to get more experience. And of course, I would like to win with the ladies. Of course. I don't know if that's in so there. You're not there we will not see. to win, aren't you? So <laughs> you've uh, got to at least yes. try. <laughs> yes, we will give it all and we will see if that's in there. I don't know yet. I haven't driven the car. I haven't seen the car yet, but I know it's there. So that's good. It's going to be a fun day, I think. Yes. Do you have then either from your kind of latest chapter of your priority or from before when you were racing then, do you have a, a personal highlight from your motorsport journey so far? Well, I think the highlights for me uh, was... Silverstone doesn't count. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I was just thinking as I asked that question. That's too easy. Well, <laughs> that's, that's first race. I drove in the summer. Uh, I drove the first race in the end of August. Also at mm. Silverstone International Track. Yeah, that was great. That was a, a very good start. Uh, and we needed to learn. We drove the Volkswagen Scirocco. It mm. was a difficult car. We only had one afternoon in the car, so we had no experience. <laughs> we didn't know thing. if the car will hold it for two hours. But we just gave it all and uh, make sure we finished, get the experience in, get the signatures for the license. And mm. it was amazing. It was an amazing day. And it's one that's never forget. <laughs> is there less pressure in that kind of a situation then? Because you kind of, if not the excuse if you haven't had a lot of time in the car, but it's kind of a way of you can just go out and do your best and you can't really, there can't be too much expectation there because, again, you're just being thrown in the deep end. Did that help you in, when you are in the car and just enjoy it more or was it the opposite? Well, I was just very focused. So uh, the enjoyment com comes more after. Then when I'm in the car because I'm very focused and I want to give it all, achieve the best that I can at that moment. So uh, I still enjoy it also in the car, but I enjoy it always more afterwards. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Kind of do you watch yourself back then and kind of get the enjoyment that way. And or is it kind of just you go back and also, think, oh my God, I just did that. <laughs> yeah, but also when I stepped out of the car, it was just great to to watch my teammate Steve Crompton back then. Uh, mm. to see him driving and when he finished the car we were all very excited give each other a hug because we worked so hard for this moment to happen yeah that was great it's just a great feeling so take it back to Silverstone the first time then just briefly how did it feel when you did get behind the wheel for the first time you say obviously you got the helmet was on and you're obviously concentrating on that but surely just before the visor goes down did you have any kind of the emotions you said it was very special to you to be back in the car but what kind of was it like then doing those first couple of laps as you were getting getting reacquainted with racing well i was at first uh, i drove with jamie so he did a lap mm. uh, a few laps and then i could see the track because i drove it enough in the sim but real yeah. life it's always a little bit different than in the sim and uh well Slowly after progressing that, closer like, watching on tv doing the same in the yeah. passenger seat and then finally <laughs> in the driving seat yes yes and then uh it was my turn i was a little bit nervous but very excited it was mm. more like uh, nervous that everything will be okay with the hand controls it was all very new so i knew that i needed to to learn and uh i wanted to do well especially when you come back for the first time you just want to to bring the car good in a good state uh, back mm. and just gain the experience and everything uh, that you need so uh, yeah i was very excited at the moment and uh, also afterwards yeah <laughs> I'm not, I'm not surprised at all. And again, Silverstone of all places is not too bad a place to, to come back to, is it? No, absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> so 
so you've got a very um, straightforward and logical mindset for the approach to this. And I think it's going to it's going to serve you well moving forward there. And I, I want it's going to be interesting for me as a spectator, at least um, probably for you as well. Actually, I don't know if you thought about this. I'll, I'll find out in a second. But as I was saying earlier, you've always had motorsport in your background and you had a lot of time doing it, whereas a lot of the other people in the team have come to a bit later. Do you think that gives you a little bit of an advantage over them or is it all kind of... Um, not that you're going against them as such, but, you know, there's always that little bit of inter-team rivalry or is there not really any of that? Well, well, for me, it's more important that we can learn from each other because I think together we can reach the higher goal instead yeah. of alone. So uh, the experience I that I can bring with... Other. <laughs> Well, we are a team, so we need to do it all together. You win or you lose together. And, um, well, the experience that I can bring in, I can help them. The experience that they have, they help me. And that's good. I'm saying, especially with such a kind of diverse amount of backgrounds there as well, there is, especially not just on, on the, the personal side of it, but then the disability side of it, you'd be interested to see what works for one of you is not guaranteed to work for someone else but also no. what helps someone could be interesting as a new way for someone else to, to try something so it's a it's a thing that no other team really has on that one yeah yeah it's great that we all can learn from each other and uh well i also needed to learn myself because now a lot is getting down for me Mm-hmm. And uh, I always arranged everything when I was younger myself. In the sim racing team, I arranged most of the things myself with my partner. And uh, yeah, I needed to get used to it, to give it all out of hands and <laughs> just let it all come to me. And um, and Jamie knows, uh, we already talked about it. I said, I'm sorry, I'm not very good at that. <laughs> I just need to get used to it a bit. So uh, t- I try to control everything a bit and uh, I just need to let that go a little bit more. But it's getting there. <laughs> so of all the things to have to work on as a driver, that one's probably not too, it's, it's an all right thing to have to work on, I think. Yeah, I think that too. I'm. I was just not used to it, and even on the first race day, I tried to to help. And yeah, mm. just passionate. Uh, yeah. Also, yeah, I like to share the passion of racing. The same with sim racing. Mm. I like to share passion. I like to help other people. So yeah, that's great. So you definitely fit into the right team. Then I think there. Yeah, I'm very happy uh, to be part of it. So a couple of fun questions to finish off then, which are completely not most sport related. Is there a pizza topping you've always wanted to try, but you've never had? On a pizza? Yeah. Uh, well, I really love my quattro fromaggi or my, or my salami pizza, so I'm all good. I don't You're know. Staying traditional, okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like it. Italian food is my favorite food. So uh, a pasta quattro fromaggi. Uh, don't wake me up for it but uh, <laughs> in the evening i would love to have it with some red wine oh it's very good it's my favorite food I'm making me hungry now i shouldn't have asked that question <laughs> <laughs> do you have any bucket list items well i have some i really love the mountains and uh, my dream is uh, to live at some point and there is a place in austria uh, steinbeck Amrofen. it's in the mountains um not much is there, just the nature, the mountains, mm. the snow in the winter. And there is a, a house there, and it was for sale. And I still regret not going for it six years ago. <laughs> but that is really one of my dreams to live there. And uh, well, I showed my partner when we were there. I said, I need to show you something. This is my dream. <laughs> So there is really nothing there in that little town. And there are a few houses, a few hotels. That's all. Mm-hmm. For the shops, you need to drive 20 minutes down because it's higher up. And it's just so beautiful. Sounds and quite just have the rest, the rest around, the house in the nature. And then you can go out and you can meet others when you want to or uh, go to the busiest cities or something yeah it's just, great just get a sim in the house and it's perfect then <laughs> <laughs> yes it will it will be and i really <laughs> love that uh, yeah i just love to be in the mountains so uh, i like to travel there uh, a lot and uh, 
one of the bucket list things will be also go back to Switzerland again and go to the Jungfrau Joch. Uh, yeah, it's very beautiful with a clear sky and then you can watch all over Switzerland, Austria, part of Germany, Italy. It's beautiful. So, yeah, I like those kind of things with mountains, snow. Uh, yeah, that's great. And then final question then, what is the worst Christmas present you've ever received? Uh, I don't know, really. It's kind of good that nothing springs to mind. <laughs> no, I have no clue. Uh, the worst Christmas presents. You've done quite well then from what I'm seeing there because nothing's, nothing's coming. <laughs> <laughs> No, I had a really good one. I know one of the best. I have a hoodie well, with my logo on. I don't have it on now, but this is the logo. And nice. I have a hoodie and with my race number 147 on. Black and orange because, yeah, orange. I'm still Dutch. Oh, yeah, yeah. We all love orange. And uh, I had it last year from Sof. And, uh, well, I don't want to wear it because I'm so happy with it. It was the first <laughs> thing with my logo on. And I'm just too afraid that, that something happens with it. So frame I don't it, wear maybe. it often. I should frame it. But that was definitely one of the best presents I had for Christmas. Nice. The worst, uh, I really don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> Fingers crossed this year. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. <laughs> oh. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you today, and I want to thank you very much for your time and wish you best of luck again with everything that you do with, with Team Brit next year. Thank you. Thanks again to Yvonne for coming onto the curves with me, and I want to wish her the best of luck for 2023. Join me again soon when I'll be chatting to another famous face from the world of motorsport. And in the meantime, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and check out the other interviews on the On the Curbs YouTube channel. If you want to hear more from me, you can listen to me chat about F1, amongst other things, over on the Undercut podcast, and you can also hear me dissecting everything Nitro RX related, including chatting with special guests, over on the Nitro RX podcast. Both podcasts are available here on YouTube, as well as over on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever else you like to listen. You can also follow me over on Instagram at t.albers.daily.onthecurbs and read my various motorsport articles over on Is It Fast, Paddock Passion, and Paddock Sorority. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you again next week for the next episode.